What's the name of this town, man? This is this is uh, actually I don't know. <laughs> it's in okay. North Carolina. We right. just came out of Turtle Town, and we are in uh, North Carolina. I guess you would call it Hiawassee Dam. It's mm -hmm. part of Hiawassee Dam anyway. And I've been here five times this year. In the last well, about the last eighteen months, I've come here five times, and um, we are in fields of the woods, which many people won't even know exist. Now, I remember hearing stories about pilgrimages here where there were thousands of people and cars parked for a mile. And every time I've been here, it's me and a couple other people. What's going on here? Tell me a little history. Well, uh, when you look at the history of the organization, it was started in 1884 by a Baptist pastor or preacher named R.G. Sperling. And the early church uh, was started as the uh, Christian uh, Union. It was called the Christian Union. And Pastor Sperling had prayed for two years for revival. And in 1886, uh, eight people joined the reunion, or the Union. And his son, R.G. Sperling Jr., was also baptized and began to preach as well, or ordained and they started a new organization, of course, called the Christian Union. Mm -hmm. uh, it then went for about 10 years, and in that 10-year period, they prayed for revival, prayed for revival, didn't grow much. But you have to imagine what this place must have looked like. Now, 1884. Okay, 1884, people travel by wagon. E even by wagon was difficult because, mm -hmm. I mean, you're looking at mountains, uh, even horseback, most of the time, I say most of the people traveled by walking. Okay. So the dedication was there, <clears throat> and the uh, the resistance, of course, was there to, to uh, R.G. Sperling. Now, we are here where North Carolina and Tennessee meet. Right on the line, virtually. Okay. All right. Now, the resistance he met, um, there was some violence. Can you talk a little bit about that? It was terrible violence, and I take this from a book called Like a Mighty Army which was written by Charles W. Kahn, who was part of the Church of God. Mm -hmm. And according to Mr. Kahn, and he did a lot of research and talked to a lot of people uh, that still live in this area that were related, uh, offspring of the Spurlings and others that were in the initial church. And yes, there was a lot of resistance uh, as far as people being beaten with whips, uh, buildings being burned down. Uh, the because of their different religion or because of they wanted to exercise their right to religion? I, it was just the difference, the, the, the Holy Ghost revival that had mm -hmm. broken out. Okay. And people were just in resistance of it. You know, today in 2010, I see revivals, I see Holy Ghost revivals breaking out because the world is in a shape today. People are looking for answers. Do you think in 1884 they were looking for answers? Oh, I believe they were hungry. I believe that the world had gotten complacent and somewhat arrogant. Even mm -hmm. though it was sparse population here, mm -hmm. there was still a, a tinge of arrogance maybe or, or whatever it was in that day. They were looking for a great move of God. And, mm -hmm. and you know, when, when God isn't in us to the fullest, the Bible proclaims that we're the temple of the Holy Ghost. And... And when we're not full, I believe people search for it. And certainly this man did, and he had the determination to find God in the fullest. <clears throat> and he, he stuck in there. Oh, in fact, the Mr. Sperling, R.G. Sperling, died that year. I believe it was 1886. He passed away, and his son continued the work. And the few handful of followers determined to make it go. Right. And, of course, today there are four million strong in the Church of God, and we're sitting on the Church of God of Prophecy property here mm -hmm. at Fields of the Wood, which were all one at one time because the Christian Union was then uh, changed. The name was changed to the Holiness Church as more people began to join. Mm -hmm. And a man named Tomlinson, a, I believe it was A.J. A.L. Tomlinson, uh, then joined the church, and he was one of the leaders of the church. There was a rift that happened, and they split, and the Church of God went one way, and the Church of God of Prophecy went another. But there was great revival here. Uh, the old Shearer Schoolhouse, the site of it, is still here. 
not far from where we're sitting today. Right, I've been there. And that schoolhouse was burned down by... Rascals. And actually it was their first meeting place. It was. And so it was burned down in, you know, basically to say, you're not going to do this. You're not going to worship God the way you want to. That's exactly that what That is happened. unbelievable. That is unbelievable. They, these people were shot at. They were stoned. They were just persecuted to the point where most people would give up and say, mm -hmm. you know, ha have it. Four they million strong, they did not give up. They, they were determined, uh -huh. and their missionary work, I can attest to the fact that, that it's effective there. In many parts of the world today, uh, seeing people saved by their missionaries. In fact, uh -huh. I was sharing that story with you earlier, a man that just preached at our church uh -huh. recently, who was part of a... Of a uh, uh, what would you call it, not a mob, but a, a tribe in Africa. Uh -huh. And the missionary from the Church of God went there and began to preach. This man, this uh, fellow's grandfather was the witch doctor, the medicine man. And, of course, that was real resistance. And the young man was saved. He was the only one saved that day and, and came back uh -huh. to America and, and attended Lee College and wound up preaching at our church. In fact, another interesting story. At the time, I was praying for a job. Uh, we had prayer. He laid hands on me and prayed after that service. And the next day, I won't go into all the detail, but I was called with the best job I ever had in my life. Isn't that something? And when I finally got to the company, they told me it was miraculous how that happened because the, the resume I had sent in was lost and whatever. Mm -hmm. So I personally uh, was raised in the Catholic Church, and I found, really found the Lord here in a true way, uh -huh. and was saved and have been in the Church of God now for 35 years. Wow. Um, what does it mean to you to see this property where thousands and thousands of people used to visit? Truly, I've probably been here more this year than anybody you'll ever meet, because I was fascinated with it. I, I kept asking questions why is it just sitting here why is it not doing what it was meant to do it was meant to bring revival wasn't it yes it was and i'm saddened by it but yet you uh, understand what goes on because satan is always on the job satan uh, works overtime he works overtime and the bible tells us to resist him and he'll flee but he flees for a season he's always right mm -hmm. back there again and mm -hmm. seems like the more uh, a work gets started and you begin to uh, to see a great movement uh, he get, comes in and and as you you could see in this book uh, if he can't find one way to to disturb he'll find another mm -hmm. uh, he's very deceptive in his ways but you know what I read the last chapter and we win the book we that's win a, the war that's we awesome. win, we do we do win uh, in the end so we just have to hang in there and uh, RG Sperling is a is a great uh, inspiration to me because I think back again of what went on here and the persecution these people faced mm -hmm. in the early days and how they uh, even if they didn't have that persecution just to get to church in that day right I see people today that use excuses the car wouldn't start or it was too cold out <laughs> Kind of running my pantyhose. Yeah, or whatever it <laughs> whatever. is. Whatever. Yeah. But these people would walk for miles in mm -hmm. the in this weather and not on paved roads, but I mean even horseback riding here was difficult in that day. Mm -hmm. And many of them walked for miles and would go place to place to uh, to to evangelize, to do have missionary work and won many people to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And of course, the same revival broke out then in the early 1900s in California in Azusa Street and worldwide. There are, uh, back in the early turn of the century, there were a lot of revivals breaking out. And I see that happening again today. I believe the, the time of the Lord is close at hand. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I believe that men are, and women are hungry for the Lord. Right. And revival right. will break out again. Right. Well, today when we planned this trip, it was very windy at my house. It was very cold. There was a drizzle of rain this morning. And your grandson being my cameraman, I said, you know, Nathan, I made plans to be with your grandfather today, and it's not looking so good. 
as we approached your area, the, the clouds lifted, the skies opened up, it was totally blue. We got here, this is the most beautiful place. And it was truly in God's plan because you and I have talked about this for a while. I've been coming here enough to know that this has to be shared with people. Every time I come, I'm, I'm just totally blown away. Um, the tomb, the crosses, the Ten Commandments, um, the Psalms. I mean, to me, this is where you want to go and just reflect. It is such an amazing, amazing place. Yes, it really is. And <clears throat> they are doing a lot of work here. Uh, they're going to rebuild the uh, area, that they, the pavilion where they kept the plane. Mm -hmm. well, let's in, talk a little bit about that plane. Okay. In the early days, they had a small single-engine plane. Mm -hmm. uh, probably couldn't go far without refueling. But it, there is an airport here, and you can drive up to the airport. Uh -huh. In fact, it's a very interesting drive up there because there's a lot to see up there as well. But they would take off on, from that runway in that small plane and travel around, preach, maybe stay gone a day or two, a week, whatever, uh -huh. and then come back and, and uh, park the plane here and, and have church here and what have you back in these uh, woods and, and Ed, how many people do you think have come here and worshipped God? Oh, there has to have been, over the years, probably millions. I'm not sure how long this place has been here. Uh, I'm okay, certain. from 1884, it started down the road. Okay, and it progressed, and then it split, and then it progressed again. And the first time I came here, it was very, very sad looking, and it, it needed revamping. And um, actually, about the third time I came here, the pool that we have some shots of, the baptismal was full of stagnant water. And today it's full of beautiful water. And I understand there was a, baptiz a baptiz baptizing here a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Now, does that mean they're on the road to recovery? I believe they are. I actually belong myself to the Church of God. And, and again, this is the Church of God of Prophecy. Mm -hmm. Very close. We're one at one time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I don't have a... a close knowledge of everything that goes on here, although I do come out here often. Uh, I just think it's such a beautiful area, so serene. And you can really understand, uh, as you walk around the property, how the early founders might have listened to God as He spoke in these mountains. Right. And that's what they claim happened to them. But I believe they are coming back, the Church of God of Prophecy. I personally wish they would join again with the Church of God. It would be a very strong organization. And who knows, someday that may happen. But they are coming back. They were financially strapped for a while. Uh, I believe there was a split in the church. Uh, and that's probably what happened. People, uh, the minute some split comes about, they quit tithing. Right. And it's, well, in today's economy, in today's everybody economy, is struggling. There's so many churches struggling. Yeah. That's absolutely right. People struggle without a job, and mm -hmm. hopefully, uh, you know, that, that's going to turn around soon, too. Uh, the Bible tells us that my people, which are called by my name, they'll you know, show them themselves. If we turn from our wicked ways, God will hear us and, right. and bless our land again. And I believe there are a lot of people praying that prayer. Right. And God, I believe, is a man of His Word, and will turn this thing around. I think so. I want to talk a little bit about, I have an aunt who was raised country Baptist, and she became a Catholic and was until the day she passed away. She went from Southern Country Baptist to Catholic. You went from Catholic to Church of God. Tell me a little bit about the difference in what you see with your religion today, because obviously religion is a big part of your life today. Yes, it is. And uh, basically the, the Catholic Church preaches Christ. Uh, not with power like the Church of right. God or the Baptist Church. I've been to Catholic Mass, so I understand a little bit about it. Um, I've been to a Catholic funeral. I understand a little bit, but I don't understand the difference because I told you earlier I've been to Methodist Church, Baptist, Pentecostal Church, Christ Church, God, you name it. I've been to all of them, and, and what I see in common is God. That's true, and, and Christ is preached in both. Mm -hmm. But the main big difference is in all my years, younger years growing up in the Catholic Church, I never heard salvation preached, being born again. You would go to the priest uh, in a confessional and tell your sins to the priest, and the priest would forgive your sins. I don't criticize anybody in anybody's religion, but I just don't believe that that's the way. Mm -hmm. When I began to read the Bible, 
uh, the Bible tells us clearly, Jesus said to call no man your father. And I read that and I began to think about that. And I began to think about who I was really worshiping in that church. And there was more worship of the Pope and the priest, uh -huh. I believe, than there was of uh -huh. Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ is the only way. And I would ask my wife and others, what does it mean to be born again? And you know, I would go to churches that the Spirit of God would begin to move. It would literally scare the devil out. Uh -huh. I think it's intended to, Ed. <laughs> it is. It is indeed. <laughs> it's intended to. Uh, I used to work in the radio business. Uh, uh, I was an engineer at a radio station, and we were broadcasting a live revival at, a, at an all-black church. And I was in the corner... Uh, recording that or broadcasting it and that service just got the Holy Ghost fell. Oh yeah. I had never been in anything like that in my life and I was like Wendy Bagwell if <laughs> you could have made a door, a door out. But you know what? When I left that church that night, I knew those people had something that mm -hmm. I didn't have. Mm -hmm. And I searched for it ever since. Mm -hmm. I would ask people, what does it mean? What do you mean be born again? You know, that's hard to explain to somebody mm -hmm. until you experience it and experience Until you get that feeling coming across and you just know it's right. You know you that you know, know that, that you, you know. know. Yeah. And your life has changed. See, yeah. that's what happened in these mountains. And mm -hmm. I believe many lives were changed. And, and of course, uh, it began to affect the liquor stores and the tobacco stores. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think that's another reason they came against people so much because lives were changed. Right. And, when you uh, begin to affect someone's income, <laughs> right. which the loss of liquor revenue probably did, or whatever, right. and that, that was another reason that they probably resisted. But mm -hmm. at any rate, it is real, and uh, I would never turn back or change. I experienced that. And is your family still Catholic? All of my family, my mother's side and father's side is, and of course they've abandoned me years ago. Don't speak to me today. Wow, you're I, kidding me. No, I'm not. So I, you could write a book about persecution yourself. I could, but not like they had in right. this beginning. Not but violence. Not, but yeah, oh no, yeah, not yeah. never yeah. shot at it. Yeah. Although they probably liked it. <laughs> Sometimes wow. I won't. Wow, but, that is so strange. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's... Uh, people get indoctrinated with their beliefs sometimes and mm -hmm. they they just don't really look for the truth. Did you try to talk to him and oh, explain I have. to him? I yeah. have in the past and it falls on deaf ears. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. <clears throat> uh, the Bible says uh, if they don't hear you to shake the dust from your feet. You know, right. At right. some point in time you have to do that. I still pray for them. I still love them. Right. But uh, I haven't been able really to talk to them about it since they're Wow. Wow. Now, what about your family here? Um, I know Nathan, where does he go to church? Nathan goes with us, uh, mm -hmm. although he, our church uh, doesn't have any youth right mm -hmm. now. We have a lot of uh, people that are transient. They go to Florida. In the a lot winter. of gray-haired folks like me. A lot me. of gray-haired. <laughs> Some of the people, though, that go there, uh, Brother Bill Forrester, a lot of people will know him has been there for, well, he's 90-some years old, still as sharp as a tack. Wow. And he was there in the very beginnings. Uh -huh. So, and he could tell you a lot about what went on being that old, but he still goes to the church. Uh, we have another lady that's uh, over 100 now, and of course she's too feeble to come, but she uh, was here at the very beginnings. Uh, and uh, a lot of, uh, of folks in the area yet, uh, are still in the movement and know a lot about what went on here and so on. But Nathan sometimes goes there, but he, he likes a church with more youth in it. Right, I understand that. Yeah, he searches more like that. that so. Well, let's talk a little bit about your wife. What what religion does she practice? Uh, she goes with me now to the Church of God. She was raised Baptist, and certainly Baptist has a, a wonderful, they believe the same way we do. Absolutely. There's very little difference in the doctrine. Right. Uh, but it's just in what you're comfortable with, you know, where you're led, I believe. Right, I've right. been where I'm at now for 25 years, I guess. I have a nephew that's a Baptist pastor in Blue Ridge, uh, pastors of church, but she was raised Baptist and uh, now goes to church with me. Okay, 35 years into this, would you ever turn back? Never. I, I think about that. I thought about that when I read it in because the Because you said your family basically abandoned you. 
but your life is so blessed. You're such an amazing man. You've had so many great things happen to you. And, and you know, you gave it all up because of your beliefs. Yeah, I uh, I would never turn back. That's right. I There's nothing really to turn back to. I mean, if you gain the whole world, right. what would you really gain? Right. Because we're all going the same way. It's appointed and the man wants to die. Mm -hmm. We'll answer to God then. That's right. Well, this is such a gorgeous place. We're going to take a break, and we're going to go to, we've, we've shown a little bit of footage. Um, we haven't been over to the Psalms. We haven't been over, we've gotten a little, little shot of the tomb. What is it like, what does it take to maintain how many grounds are here, how many acres? You know what, I really don't know, but I would guess. Ten, over a, oh, I, there may be that many. Maybe 50? I would guess 50, uh -huh. but I would say there's probably 10 that they take care of. Uh -huh. There's a lot of wooded area here. Uh -huh. Uh, and but it is like you say a gorgeous area beautiful it's just so serene mm -hmm. now to give directions we come um, out of Ducktown Tennessee go through Turtle Town and from Turtle Town we stay on the road that comes right into North Carolina and you know I don't know the name of the road but I bet you we get it for folks but it's such a wonderful drive and we it took us about an hour and 35 minutes today to get here from Jasper so it's not very far at all no it's about 20 minutes from Ducktown mm -hmm. and you do stay on that road when the road forks at the old Turtle Town school or right. post office you stay to the right uh -huh. If you went to the left, you'd be going towards Teleco Plains. Mm -hmm. If you stay to the right, it's about four or five miles beyond that, and you're here in the park. Mm -hmm. Now, they still have, I believe, the Easter services here. I was told that today. Those are wonderful services. People come from all over the world, really, and uh, they have a, a, probably a two- or three-day meeting here where they sing and preach, mm -hmm. and really it goes on day and night. Wow. Uh, it's, it's really something to come out here for that. And the spirit really moves. The place is really packed out at that time. Uh -huh. Well, it's so funny. When we first got here, there was music playing, and Peg McCamey was singing, and my co-host, Matt Dibler, was singing, I Have Not Forgotten. That was the song of the year a couple of years ago. Um, I think that's one of the things about this church, no matter what happens tomorrow, there are so many people who will not forget the pilgrimages that they made here with, as children with their families. Well, that's you know, right. this place will not be forgotten. That's right. I, I believe that's right. <clears throat> and, and as I said earlier, there are a lot of people that are descendants of the founders of this mm -hmm. church. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lady that helps my wife uh, clean our house who was a Bryant. And Mr. Bryant, W.L. Bryant, I believe it was, was one of the founders, early founders of the mm -hmm. church. Mm -hmm. So, yes, they still have a lot of offspring in the area. And... Uh, a lot of people with knowledge of what went on here and through the years. What happened. Now, I notice there's a donation box. Um, other than the few donations that they probably get, how do they maintain this? Some of the churches, uh, the church got a prophecy, still donate part of their portions of their tithes that would come to the organization and keep it going. And there, there have been other churches. I noticed at the pool, someone had donated to, uh, it was a church of God in Florida, I believe. Right that had donated to keep it going. Uh -huh. uh, and, but donations are a big factor here. Right. So people do donate and come out and, and that's what keeps it going. Well, we've come inside. Y'all knew we'd find food. We actually found an ice cream or two. <laughs> we are once again in Fields of the Woods. This is an amazing story and it got better when you walked in the door. Miss Vivian, tell me a little bit about your history and your relationship. Where's that book? Where's that? Okay, let's get this book, number one. You walked in with some treasures. This is Fields of the Wood and this is from 1960. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, whose book was this? It was my father's. Okay, is your dad George Reed? George Reed, who passed away in 1960. Okay, now in this book, there is a photo of... Tell me a little bit about this house. Well, um, Shirley and my grandma, her great-grandmother and my grandma lived in that house. And I can remember going there, they had a wooden walkway. 
-hmm. And Mom said that uh, she lived there until she was a little girl. You know. And uh, Grandpa had a store across the road from that, and it was a post office, General Merchandise. Mm -hmm. And uh, they finally they sold it to the Church of God. Okay, the Church of God bought this in what year? Well, in that it says 1941. Okay. And is that house still here today? Well, the chimney's there and the old living room is there. Okay. Where could we find that if people wanted to take a trip and find that? You go back down to Lowfields Woods and uh, make a right and go about a mile. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's about a fourth of a mile then. Mm -hmm. And then Cheer School House and the Holy Ghost Markers about a mile. Right. Okay, now you brought in a photograph that has some amazing shots. We're going to talk about M.D. Kilpatrick is sitting in the buggy, A.G. Tomlinson. Now we talked about him earlier. He is holding the Bible. <laughs> J.B. Mitchell is standing, and the boys on the left. Can we talk about that? Luther Bryant, who is that? Okay, what about Homer Tomlinson? He was Milton's, A.J.'s uh, brother. Okay, and um, let's see. The girls are Dolly Anderson. Do we know them? Do you think there are any of their descendants still around I here? I don't know. There's uh, some Thomasons in there. Uh -huh. And this was taken in 1901. I love the way they dressed. Wouldn't you hate to have to iron those clothes? Oh my goodness gracious sakes alive. Now, you brought me some photographs too, uh, some history of your family. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Your dad was one of the miners. Yes. This is a treasure. Now tell me a little bit about what year do you think this picture was taken? It's probably in the late 30s or the early 40s. My daddy got blown up in the mines in the 30s, and he went back to work in 41. Okay. And uh, he was totally disabled, and mom kept orders during the TBA to take care of us. Uh -huh. us. Now, how old was your dad when this happened? Uh, gosh, I don't know. It's probably uh, 1960. He was 60 something years old. He was 60. And when we look at the photograph, your dad is, he has a pipe, and yep. you can yep. identify him too. Yes, you yep. Boy, I wonder how many of these folks are still around. Not many of them. Probably not many. That's amazing. Okay, now, this is something. I love this. This is, tell me a little bit about this lady. She was born in 1850, what? 1856 and died in 1956. Okay. She taught Santa school at Reach Chapel. Uh -huh. They would walk three miles board the river, Hiawassee River, in a boat and walk three miles to reach chapel and I've got a bunch of her uh, little Sanskrit cards. That's funny because we were talking about today, people find an excuse not to go yeah. to church. And she walked three miles and three then miles. got in a boat to make yeah. it to church. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Now is this her birthday? It's okay, 100th birthday. Mrs. Martha Reed observes her 100th birthday yesterday. How long has she been gone? 1956. 1956. Wow. So she's been gone almost as long as I am old. That is amazing. <laughs> that is so amazing. Who is the lady in the photo with That's her? That's her daughter. Okay. And she didn't have electricity. And she would tell about, uh, she told us about the Indians coming and staying all night with them. And uh, said they were friendly. And they had the Indian baskets. Uh-huh. And, uh. Said, what kind well, of Indians were in this area? Well, they came uh, down to Hanging Dog to uh, get material for baskets. Uh -huh. Now, you have two wonderful photographs. This is an old postcard. Can we talk a little bit about these two gentlemen? Well, one is um, A.J. Thompson was the first uh, general overseer, and then uh, Bill. Okay. And what year do we think this was? Um, the general overseers of the Church of God of Prophecy, let's see if it tells us a year. 1943. Uh, he died in 1943. So that is, that is amazing. Now, you also brought me a picture. I love this building. Tell me a little bit about this because I've never seen this. Or well, I bet I have and I didn't know yeah, it. Yeah, the Nan Cables. Uh huh. Uh, that, that is one of the Nan Cables married MD's daughter, I suppose. Uh huh. I'm not sure. Uh huh. But anyway. Uh, I met uh, the daughters. Now, where is this house today? That is at Dutt Town. 
uh, when you're driving into that pan, you can see the big house, I suppose, up on the hill. It's the old funeral home, the old yeah. Waters funeral home, yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. Do you know, are there any of the uh, of the Sperling descendants still living in the area, or the Bryants? There's a lot of Sperlings, yeah. That still live in the yeah. area? Mm -hmm. How about the Bryants? I don't know about that. Okay, now this is your daddy. Let's show this photograph. This is him younger, and this is him toward the end of his life. World War One, 22 years old. That These are such treasures. I'm so glad you came to be with us today. And this these are amazing. Brother. Okay, and this is your brother? He died at 62. Okay. Now, were y'all members of this church? Yes. Yes, okay. I still am. You're still a member of this church. Now, how many people do you think, we were talking about this earlier, and Ed couldn't come up with a number, and I certainly couldn't. How many people do you think have actually worshipped here and possibly been saved here? I don't know. I was nine year old when I got saved. Here? In the sanctuary. Okay. We had church in the sanctuary. Okay. And uh, I was telling someone today, I said this lady, she would let me walk to church with her. And we'd walk a mile and a half. Down where we live, and uh, my mom didn't believe in the church at the time, and uh, so I would come with her. Wow! And we come to the egg rolling Easter egg hunt and everything. And anyway, when I got saved, she just liked and liked and liked. Wow! So that's the way she rejoiced. Wow! <laughs> now, did your mom ever become a member of the church? Mom, mom was one of the first four members. Wow! She thought she'd die if she didn't join. Oh, that's amazing. That's what she said. That is amazing. And she played the piano for Clara how many years? Forty something or fifty something years. Yeah. Now this is an old spelling book. That's my grandpa Reed's Union Spelling Book. Oh wow. What a treasure. And what year do you think that book? There's no spelling, is it? You're in the Union War. Isn't that something? Yeah. Wow. To have these treasures. Now what else did you bring? I want to see this one. Okay, this is the Church in the Wilderness First Assembly Memorial Service. I wonder how many of these people are still around. How far back does that picture date? Do you know? Let's see. We don't have a date. Oh, yes, we do. 1973. So there could possibly be some of these yep. people still around. Yeah. Now, what house is this in front of? First Assembly yeah. Memorial Service. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay, now what's it? Oh, I love this picture. This is her grandma. This Mary's is Shirley mother. Singleton's grandmother? That's oh. Mary's. How neat. Mom's. How neat is that? And what year do you think this is? That is. Do you have a picture like this? No. I've never seen that before. This is Shirley's mom is her grandmother's this one, is that right, yes. Shirley? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is so neat. Now the rest of them brothers and sisters. Yes. And, and so grandma. you and Shirley are related first by cousins. first cousins. Okay. Isn't that Well something? she's second cousin to me. Okay. Mary Mary and me. Yeah. yeah. My mother. Yeah. And this is I uh, yes. How neat is that? And this has her social security card. Our county resident fishing license. I love that. <laughs> At 93 years old. That is too, too cool. She was the sweetest woman. Wow. Now, Mary's a lot like her. Is that right? She's sweet. awful sweet. Yeah. She is, I guess. Awful, awful yeah. sweet. This is yeah. really sweet. Okay. <laughs> 94 <laughs> birthday. Yeah. Wow. What treasures! Goodness, that is so so neat. This is so neat. Okay, this is Mary's grandma That's too. My mom. Okay, so here's Mary's grandmother, and here's your mom, and the rest of them family members. Yes, grandma and grandma. Lord, wouldn't you hate to dress like that today, oh, Shirley? Hate it. My yeah. goodness gracious, oh, that man. is amazing. That is amazing. I just love this. That is too cool. What else you got? Well, here? What is that? This is an old 
Okay, this is uh, George Quinn and his aunt Nancy Myra Roberts Reed around 1900 or 1905. George's mother died when he was nine days old and Myra took him in to raise. George was born around 1880 and Myra was born June 16, 1834. Died September 14, 1916. This is the coolest looking house. And I love the fact that it's on that rock foundation. Do you think this house still exists? That is so neat. That is absolutely the coolest thing. Do you uh, know and remember or have been told any more about the Shear Schoolhouse? I know it doesn't exist there anymore, and I've heard that it was burned down because they worshiped there. No, this is a story. Okay, tell us. Whenever Mom was a little girl, they would go to camp for the homeless church. Mm -hmm. When the Holy Ghost began to fall, there was about a hundred people that got Holy Ghost. So they quit going. She said, they'd go in the wagon. And she'd say, she said, Paul, why don't we go to church anymore? And she said, it's too dangerous. And he said, it's too dangerous. They got to throwing yellow jackets in on them and hornet's nest in on them. Just all kinds of stuff to persecute them. Well, uh, my aunt cooked for these men and then uh, some of my folks give them the land and the logs to build the church. Mm -hmm. So they had to tear that church down to burn it. And they did. Mm -hmm. well, they, my did daddy, they didn't want to burn a church. They so couldn't they burn it standing. Uh -huh. They had to tear it down. They tore it down so they could burn the logs and say they didn't burn a church down. They burned yeah. the logs. Yeah. So anyway, Amazing story. Uh, uh, my grandma Kilpatrick went over there and uh, she she said them women would roll, they had white dresses on, and they'd just roll and shout, and they called them Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she said, I said, Grandma, didn't they get dirty? She said, no, I don't think so. Well, they <laughs> turned her out of Liberty Baptist Church for going. Oh, wow. And then she went back and joined back. <laughs> now, anyway, how many years have you been a member of the church? Um, <clears throat> 19, yes. <yeah, 60 laughs> okay. Now, the... The ground, uh, the holy ground where the spirit fell, was there a church on that ground at the time? Now, where are you talking about? Just past your school on the left, just the hundred feet. That was supposed to be where the church was. Okay, that's and what I thought. And my daddy was going to Grandma Reed's, that lived over in the Pleasant Hill area, and he walked through the trail, and he came through there, and this man was up there praying. And Daddy listened to him, and he was praying for the Lord to forgive him for helping burn the church. Oh, wow. And all of those men that helped burn it died very violent. Isn't that something? It's Isn't amazing. that something? It yeah. Is wow. That is amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. Now, how many members in this area do you know who still go to the church who have memories like you have? Are there many of the older folks left? I don't know. I didn't I ask really your age. Didn't ask your age, but are I'm there three, are there? I'm three quarters. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Are there members <laughs> older than you that are still around? Um, <coughs> Susie. Um, what's her name? Susie Led. Uh, Ella know, used to be. Uh, Susie Ledford. Okay. Uh, we were friends, and I don't know. If, Clara, do you know Howard is? But he don't know as much as I do, does he? Guys? Uh, now, is this part of a treasure for you to be back here today and see how beautiful it is because the grounds are well kept? It's beautiful. Yeah, we did walk up here. We walked uh -huh. to go up to the airport and walk a mile uh -huh. up there. Uh -huh. year it Does it make you sad that people don't come here like they used yeah. to? Yeah. Now, tell see, me the most people you've ever seen here at one time. Oh, my goodness. Thousands? Thousands. Thousands. Mm -hmm. We used to walk, when I was a child, we'd walk the mountain instead of when they got the road now, but we'd walk to the cross with the Bahama band. Mm -hmm. I'd march and go right along with them, them just sweating them, carrying them big tubas and all of that. And, you know, we grew up with the, all of the dignitaries, and they would come in here and put on plays for us, and uh -huh. run revivals, and we had tent revivals, and, and uh, just everything. everything. Now, do you come here now for Easter sunrise service? Uh, I have. I didn't get to come last year. I came two years. But we used to get up at 3.30 in the morning and walk. Wow. 
Right. Now, how far do you live from here right now? About five miles. About five miles. Well, I hope that we can bring awareness to this area. Yeah. I hope we can bring people back here. I would love to see this place full. Yeah. I would love to see people making a pilgrimage here to come here with the purpose to pray and to bring on, just like you did in the years past, the Holy Spirit. Wouldn't it be a wonderful Wouldn't area for, for a revival to break out again? Mm -hmm. They used to come in on open trucks shouting and, and speaking in tongues as they came in. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, Tell me, too, we were talking earlier about the, uh, the tomb, the remake of the tomb and the trees that are planted there. Uh, it seems like I remember someone bringing those over from yeah, Lebanon. This couple, or, this couple that was, I showed you, that was millionaires, and they donated the trees from the Holy Land. They mm -hmm. come from Israel? A lot of Israel. them didn't live. Yeah, they didn't live. Uh, the trees were. Oh, the trees are gone now? They didn't live? No. Mm -hmm. but because I, I of remember, the climate, probably. The different probably. Climate. Yeah, I was here. used to work the garden. He oh, really? Here, son, my tree got yeah, they were beautiful trees. I remember shortly yeah, after yeah. they were planted. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, the first time I came here, the pool wasn't taken care of, and it had green stagnant water in it. And I was so happy today when we came. It looks wonderful. It looks like there's a lot of work being done around here now. Maybe there will, maybe there'll be a revitalization, and people will once again come. And